there is no doubt that beards are wiry. And I believe that there's four reasons why beards are considered to be wiry or wire-like. Um, the first one really is just the curliness of the hair. Now in this video, I'm gonna show you the science behind that, but ultimately beard hair is curlier than head hair due to its shape. So we'll look at some of the microscope images of beard hair and head hair so we can essentially show you how uh, beard hairs differ. Um, and the the second reason is because of that curliness of the individual hairs, it kind of mats up. It makes the hairs much more likely to twist and turn around each other, adding to that kind of wiry um, texture uh, when you kind of push up against it. You know, like when you think of wire, I think of like a Brillo brush or like a wire scrubbing pad, and that is essentially what it is. Loads of wires intertwined and interacting with each other, and that is kind of essentially what a beard is. Uh, the third thing is the thickness of the hairs. Now the thing is, is that beard hairs are thicker than head hairs, they're essentially pubes, um, and uh, that means that when you touch them, when they're put under pressure, they don't yield as much. You know, they don't move when you kind of push down on them and they don't flow as well, and that increases the uh, the kind of wiry property of the beard. And the fourth thing is dryness. Now, wiry beards tend to be very dry, and that's because your beard is a very dry environment on your face. That's because your face doesn't produce as, man, as many natural oils as your head, and that means, therefore, that the beard hairs, especially when they get over about two inches in length, don't have the same amount of natural oiling from your face, um, and it means that we have to put in like beard oil, beard balm, beard butter to really help support that natural sebum that's produced in your skin. So those are the four reasons why beards are particularly wiry. Now let's take a look at the science behind it. This video is based on an article on beardgrownpro.com, so go check it out. I'll put a link in the description. And also, if this video is useful, please remember to give it a thumbs up because that helps me beat the YouTube algorithms. Okay, I've got a PhD in chemistry, so I love it when I can inject a little bit of science into my beard videos. And here is an example of that. So I found a 2006 study that looked at the morphology, which is essentially the shape of beard hairs. What they did is they took uh, a load of um, volunteers and they took beard hairs from different parts of their face and this is what it looked like. So you can see that the beard hairs, when they're cut in half, this is the cross-sectional shape, is that they are very irregular. You know, quite often I sort of describe beard hairs as oval in shape compared to head hairs that are circular, but beard hairs have all sorts of shapes. You can see that there's some sort of triangular features, um, there's some that are irregular, and it's this irregularity that creates the twists and turns as it grows. And I think that can impact, first of all, the in individual hair curliness and also how easy it is for your hairs to get wrapped up in each other, a tangled mess that can easily make it sort of like more rigid when you push on it and make it more wiry. So that's why really I think it comes down to the fundamental shape of the beard as it grows. Now the thing is, is that this shape is different for every single person and it varies on uh, different places on your face. So you may have particular curly hairs on your chin or you may have particularly straight hairs on other parts of your face. So it really comes down to how your beard is growing. Now compare that to head hair. This is a scanning electron microscope image of head hair and you'll see that it is nice and circular and that is because the, uh, the head hairs are not as thick and also they just grow in a follicle uh, nice and circular all the way through. And that means they're less likely to have curls and twists as as sort of crazy as beards. Now, curly hair does have some shape in it, but this is a little thing you can do. Get yourself a head hair, which I don't have, but get yourself a head hair from a friend if you must, like I would have to, and get a beard hair or a pube and just twist just sort of like run your run them between your fingers like this roll them between your fingers and one thing you'll find is that the beard hair is like flopping it goes like boom 
bonk, and that's because it's not circular, whereas a head hair is much finer, and you'll find that it just kind of like flows much more freely through your fingers. And that just simple difference that anyone can feel is why beard hairs are particularly wiry. Now, the outside structure of the hair, the cuticles, they don't change very much. This is what a beard hair uh, outside looks like, and this is what a head hair looks like. And you can see that the cuticles are essentially the same on the outside, that is the overlapping sort of roof tile like cells which protect the inside of the beard hair or the head hair, those are essentially the same. And it's important to note that the internal structure of the hairs are also very similar. You know, you've got the three layers um, and uh, that is the same for beard hair or head hair. So therefore we can sort of like conclude that it is purely the morphology or the shape of the beard hair that makes it particularly wiry. Everyone's beard hair is different and therefore the uh, kind of type of wiriness people people experience with their beards varies. Now my beard is very thick, it is very curly, and uh, I think it is quite wiry. There is no doubt that when I kind of put pressure on the beard, it doesn't yield very much until you put extreme pressures on it, um, and the hairs are thick, they're curly, they're intertwined, it's everything. Uh, it kind of matches all of the four criteria for a nice wiry beard. But I do keep it very, very well conditioned. I do that using beard oil, beard butter, beard balm, um, and shea butter, those sort of things I put into my beard on a regular basis. And I make sure that I don't sort of like use too high a heat treatment all the time. And I do give my beard a sort of day off from heat treatment. And I just do put products, good, good quality products in my beard very often. Um, and some people have even said that the angle of growth at which the beard comes out of the face sort of influences the shape. So uh, they say that if a beard hair is able to sort of like emerge directly from the skin, then uh, it is less curly, whereas beard hairs that emerge at sort of a much higher uh, or lower angle, so away from the 90 degrees away from the skin, um, and they say that they are much curlier. Now, I looked through the science, I couldn't find too much evidence in there to suggest this is true or not, but that's what some people think. So the angle of growth outside of your face can also influence how wiry your beard is potentially, but it certainly comes down to the shape of the beard hairs, and that is different for everyone. And obviously, we've got to, we've got to worry about density as well, like how thick the beard is on your face, i.e. the density of follicles follicles on your face um, and the dryness is probably one of the only things you can really control. So let's take a look at that now. How do you actually make sure your beard is not as dry so it's not as wiry? I think there are three ways that you can make sure your beard isn't super wiry. The first way is with products. So I use a good quality beard butter or a good quality beard balm. Um, the one I'm using at the moment and I'll review for you later is the Viking Revolution sandalwood beard balm. It's actually very good. I really like it. It absorbs well, provides a little bit of structure with a little bit of wax. I also make my own DIY beard balm that has much more wax for hold in the summer months uh, in Australia when it gets crazy hot. So uh, using a good quality uh, butter, I think works really well. Butter or balm. Oil, I think now that my beard is getting much uh, longer, it's harder to use oil in the way that I did when it was shorter. So I, may, I, do, I do actually enjoy using the balms more than the butters at the moment. Um, and also then we have to look at using low heat. So every morning when I shampoo my beard, um, I use a beard straightener and a hair dryer just to make sure that my beard falls in a downward direction. Now that can introduce uh, a lot of kind of uh, heat stress into the beard and therefore dry it out. So I minimize that as much as possible and I make sure to remove the heat from my beard as soon as I'm done with the, excuse me, with the styling of that beard. 
Um, and so I use my hairdryer on a low heat just to cool it all off um, and remove it completely with a cool blast just at the end, which is important. And the third way is to make sure your beard is brushed regularly. Now with a wiry beard, it's, it can get more tangled. I certainly feel like the more tangled my beard is, the more wiry it is. And so just using a good quality brush to brush through every day, every sort of, oh, you know, sometimes I do it twice or three times a day if I do need to go out or I'm meeting someone or I just feel like my beard needs a little bit of a touch up. Um, all of those things I use to make sure that I don't have a super wiry beard, um, but ultimately you can't get around your genetics, you can't get over how your beard grows and the shape of it, so you can use these three approaches to make sure that the uh, wiriness of your beard is minimized. So there we have it. That is why beard hairs are so wiry. Let me know in the comments what you would add to that and I shall see you in the next video.